He knows my name. Yes, He knows my name. He knows my name. Yes, He knows my name. Oh, how He walks with me. Yes, oh, how He talks with me. Oh, how He tells me that I am His own. You know my name. As you know my name. Good morning and welcome to Christchurch East Greenwich for our Sunday worship. My name's Margaret and I'm the vicar and as usual I'm going to be joined by other church members who'll be leading us in our sung worship, reading and praying, all pre-recorded in their own homes. Today is the third Sunday in our autumn series on the Difference course. Difference is a five session course that explores what it means to follow Jesus in the face of conflict and see transformation through everyday encounters, helping each one of us to become people of reconciliation. As well as looking at the themes in our Sunday services, we're also exploring them in our midweek connect groups. So today we're thinking about disagreeing well. It's right in the middle, the third week of our five week course. And we're thinking about how God invites us to see and to consider our response in the face of deep disagreement. Our natural instinct may be to withdraw and not to rock the boat, or to charge towards the other person and deepen the rift between us. But it's through honest, humble connection that relationships, however challenging, can reach their potential. We see Jesus isn't threatened by different views. He doesn't ignore it. He names it out aloud and expresses his view with respect and through storytelling. Jesus lived in a world with the same sort of difficulties over disagreement and conflict as we face today. So today we'll be hearing the story of Jesus and his encounter with a woman on the other side of the divide of those times. And we'll also be watching a short film about a modern day experience of disagreeing well. Then Rob, who is one of our readers in training at Christchurch, will be helping us to explore together how we can seek to disagree well in our own times and be equipped to be people of reconciliation. So as we join together in all our wonderful diversity to worship God this morning, we greet one another. The Lord be with you and also with you. We live in a divided and broken world where we long for God's presence with us and to be able to disagree well. So as we turn to God in worship, we're reminded that through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, grace and love like mighty rivers poured incessant from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love. Jim and the worship band will lead us in singing, Here is love wide as the ocean. Here is love, fast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, when the prince of life are ransomed, shed for 
His precious blood, who His love will not remember, who can cease to sing His praise, He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal day. Fountains open deep and wide Through the floodgates of God's mercy Float a vast and gracious tide Grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in and from above And hence be and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love let the all your love accepting love you ever all my days let me see your kingdom only, and my life be to your praise. You alone shall be my glory, nothing in the world I see. You have cleansed and sanctified me, you yourself have set me free. In your truth you do direct me By your Spirit through your Word And your grace my need is meeting As I trust in you, my Lord All your fullness you are pouring Through your Come to the point in the service where we pause to say sorry to God for the mistakes we've made, the times when we haven't disagreed well, where we've either run away from disagreement or where we've charged into it and made it worse. So let's pause to reflect for a moment. You have made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, yet we have brought disharmony amongst the races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We continue in prayer with our special prayer for the Difference Course. Loving God, fill us with your spirit now. Help us to be curious about other stories, listening as often as we speak. Give us the courage to be present, engaging our whole and unique selves. Inspire us to reimagine what's possible, finding hope by glimpsing you at work. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now Gav is going to read to us from the Bible and then we're going to watch a short film about disagreeing well before Rob, our reader in training, preaches to us on this topic. The Gospel reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. When they could not pay, he cancelled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he cancelled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is given, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My father died about 10 years ago and part of what he left was this house, that, a family house that had been built by his parents and has been passed down the generations and has now come to me and my siblings. I have three siblings and we've, we've always got on pretty well for siblings. Um, and one of them suddenly said a couple, about a year ago that they wanted, they were getting to the stage where they might well want to sell the house in order to realise some money for, I think, for t working towards retirement, which was understandable, but I found absolutely devastating because it came so out of the blue. And I remember just spending the whole night crying. I just couldn't help it. It, it, it means it goes so deep in me. And... Um, I thought, how are we ever going to agree about this? Because I don't want to sell it. Um, and we had a terrible conversation about it because we were using a conference call. We were talking over each other. We were interrupting each other. It was a very difficult conversation. Um, and I can't even remember how that ended, but I just remember being distraught afterwards and just thinking, I can't do this. Um, I was feeling they were ganging up on me a bit and I had felt pretty hurt. And well, all the grief reactions now, I realise, Shocked, angry, rather betrayed, hurt, certainly disappointed and deeply sad. I think I was very tempted to bury my head in the sand probably and hope it would go away. 
<laughs> Everybody was finding it so difficult to talk about. I thought, I've got to, I've got to do something, but I'm not ready yet. So I kept on agonising about it. This was a situation where I thought there's no, there's no choice and I don't want to fall out, so I have to keep talking to my siblings. A, a turning point for me was a journey in the car. Well, two turning points. One was friends saying to me, you can't run away from it, you need to face it and we'll help you. And another one was praying and having a breakthrough moment in a, a long car journey where I began to think, why does it matter so much to me, this house, and what does it represent? I think what I did was phone each of them individually to talk about it first, to really hear where they were at, to understand a bit more. But somehow we managed to keep talking about it. And I think then what happened was that I began to think, I'm, this isn't just being done to me. I, I can take some control in the way I respond. And I just, I started thinking, okay, well, instead of just thinking, this can't happen, I don't want it to happen. How can I stay there really in some way? I began to think, what does it really mean and represent this house? And why is it so important to me? Then I began to realise what, what really mattered was that it had kept me and my sister and brothers really close over the years. And um, the house is particularly significant to me because I've been there every year since I was a baby. It's been my link with America and it's kept us together as a family, which has been a really important thing to me for me, especially with me being the only one living here. And I thought, if that's what matters, then what I really want to do is try and do that for my children somehow. Um, and that changed things completely for me. And I was able to, instead of just clinging on and on and on, I was able to let go somehow and be much, much freer. And so it sort of shifted us from this place of it can't happen and living out of fear to, to actually feeling it's a pure gift. And however long we have it for you is pure gift. And we'll just enjoy it for as long as we can. And it'll be okay. I learned a lot about, I think I can be very passive aggressive too. I think I can really avoid conflict um, and not to be afraid to have people who can help me think about what's going on. And that the praying and just waiting and asking for time and believing something can be worked through, it, it has. Good morning, everyone. So prior to the passage that we read in Luke 7, we know that Jesus' fame for both his teaching and his miracles has spread far and wide. And now Simon, who is an important religious figure, a Pharisee, is sufficiently intrigued that he would like to invite Jesus for dinner, along with some of his religious friends, so they can find out more about Jesus. And so Jesus agrees to attend, intriguingly, this dinner, and he is reclining at the table with Simon and his religious friends when a woman, and we don't know her name, but we do know her reputation because Luke says that she is a person who has lived a sinful life. She turns up uninvited and she makes a beeline for Jesus. Now, there's two issues, at least, in the mind of Simon over the entrance of the woman. The first is women were not allowed to be at the table with the men. They're allowed to serve at the table, but not be at the table. And so she has broken a social convention simply by approaching. But secondly, she cries on Jesus' feet, she wipes her tears with her hair, and then she anoints his feet with an expensive perfume. This is prolonged contact, and there should not be contact between a so-called religious teacher and a sinful woman, at least in the mind of Simon. And so now we have a situation of disagreement and conflict. Simon's appalled and the woman is completely oblivious to what she is supposed to and not supposed to be doing. And she's simply 
pouring our heart out to Jesus. And so we have this highly tense moment. And the way that Jesus chooses to deal with it is to tell a story and ask a question. He tells the story of two people who have debts. One's a big debt and one's a small debt. They're both forgiven their debts. And he asks Simon and presumably Simon's guests, who would love the most? Now, Simon correctly answers that the person who's been forgiven the most would love the most. But I don't think he's really got the point because in his mind, privately, and of course it's ironic uh, that he thought he was having a private thought and now anyone who reads Luke 7 knows exactly what his so-called private thoughts were. But he was thinking if Jesus was legit, he, he would know that this woman shouldn't be touching him and he would have stopped it. Jesus tells the story to try and change the perspective, to try and get at something deeper than the superficial elements of the story. And so he then, Jesus goes on to explain to Simon that actually Simon himself has made some mistakes in the dinner. He has not afforded the common courtesies that would have been expected of a guest at a meal. And yet this woman with great sincerity has welcomed him and embraced him in a very deep and fundamental way. And so what Jesus does through the story and then through his comments, he narrows the gap between Simon as the good person and the woman as the bad person. He shows that actually Simon has not behaved well, but the woman has in the events of the evening. And he shows that the black and white of this disagreement is not quite as simple as it looks. Jesus does not attempt to pander to the sensibilities of Simon either. And he forgives the sins of the woman. I mean, this is an act of great religious controversy that he should presume to be able to forgive sins. And so Jesus knowingly creates some more controlled disagreement in order to illustrate a deeper point. And so what do we learn from this story? We learn that Jesus chooses to engage in a conflict he uses a story to reduce the tension. He illustrates deeper truths about how deep down we have many things in common, including our shortcomings. And he shows that God is a God of compassion and forgiveness who is moved by deep motivations and not by the rules and regulations and conventions of the religious system. And perhaps in a small way, we might find ourselves in a situation where we can do the same. In response to all that Rob shared this morning, we affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue to live with polarisation and difference in these challenging and strange times, our next song reminds us of the love, grace and peace that God pours over each one of us. So let's open our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we sing, I receive your love, I receive your grace, I receive your peace. Jim and the worship band will lead us in singing, 
your love shining like the sun. Your love shining like the sun, pouring like the rain, raging like the storm, refreshing me again. Ooh, I receive your love. from the past it purges every sin it purifies my heart and heals me from within I receive your grace Pour over me your waves of love, pour over me. I come and lay my burden down, gladly at your feet. I'm opening up my heart, come make this joy complete, I receive your peace. This week in our TTT or family news slot, we're going to welcome a new baby to our church family. Catherine, Mike and Emily have been part of our Christchurch family for the last year or so since moving from South Africa. Catherine is a member of our Connect Mums group, so we were able to meet via Zoom with her and pray for her, Mike and Emily as they waited for their new baby over the summer. But I'm delighted this morning to be able to welcome baby Olivia to the Christchurch family, even though sadly it won't be for very long. So here are Catherine, Mike, Emily and Olivia. And then Grace will lead us in our prayers of intercession. It's really lovely to see you all and um, lovely to see you, Emily and um, Mike and Catherine. And Emily, would you like to tell me the name of your baby? You want to take your dummy ass and say what the name of the baby is? What's your baby sister's name? Olivia. He's six weeks. Okay. And how's it all going so far, becoming a family of four? Yeah, we've had some ups and downs. <laughs> but, um, yeah. no, it's it's been really nice. Our family feels 
um, like complete now, now that Emily has a sibling and... Oh, well, that's lovely. <laughs> and um, it must be very hard, I know, because your family are all living in South Africa, aren't they? So you've been through this yeah. um, big family change and a new baby without any support from your own close family, which must be difficult. Yeah, we never imagined um, that, you know, COVID, all of this would happen because I found out the news I was pregnant before the pandemic. Um, and I think I was about two months pregnant when the um, um, we heard about, first heard about COVID. Um, and yeah, the lockdown in South Africa has been extremely strict. It was much stricter than it ever was in the UK. Um, yeah. But things have eased up there now, um, and they're opening up the economy there. But um, the borders, the international borders are still closed. Um, they've opened some of the uh, flights now in October, but they've blocked all um, international travel for leisure purposes. So none of our family members are allowed to fly out. South Africa has also put a number of countries on their banned list um, and the UK is one of them. But even if they were allowed out, then they're not allowed to go to the UK and back oh, currently. That must be really difficult. From what you said to me the other day that Emily's settling um, at nursery and enjoying that. Are you enjoying going to nursery school, Emily? Emily? Do you like going to school? Yeah. Do you? Yes. Oh, really <laughs> so she's very, she's a little bit tired. <laughs> Mike, Gavi, you've got a new job, Mike, which is great news. Yeah, thanks. So starting it in just under three months' time. Okay. So yeah, it seems to all be happening at once. <laughs> yeah, lots of life changes. Uh, yeah. A lot of life changes in one go because um yeah, new baby, new job, and with the new job. Uh, it means that we're actually um, going to have to move. Oh, wow. So where are you, where are you moving to? Um, Hertfordshire. Yeah, so that's actually been quite a stress because um, Emily starts reception next year, September, but we have to start applying uh, by December, January now, and we have to already be living in the area that we apply for her school. So... Let me, let me pray for you all. Lord God, we want to thank you for this family. Thank you for Mike and Catherine, for Emily and for Olivia. And we thank you for Olivia's safe arrival in the world and her safe arrival into this family. And we pray for them as they contend with all these big life changes, um, a new baby, new job, and this move and looking for a school for Emily. We pray that you'll watch over them, that you'd hand, you'll have your hand over every step of their journey, that you'd guide them as they look for a new home and as they look for the right school for Emily, and that you'll lead them to just the right place for them where they can all thrive <coughs> and flourish together. We pray you'll pour out your blessing on them. And we pray especially that you'd give Olivia um, peace and um, sleep and good feeding and that she'd be a really content baby. We pray for this family, that you'd watch over them and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for um, taking, I know it's difficult to find a time when you can all be together. So thank you very much for doing that and being with us and sharing something um, of yourselves with us. and know that you will remain in our prayers as you go forward and Thank um, you. don't yeah, go without saying goodbye the, the church's support with everything and all the prayers leading up to the birth um we've been immensely grateful yeah <laughs> heavenly father prepare our hearts and minds as we come before you still our worries quiet our fears and draw near to us as we draw near to you now by faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift up our world to you, your precious creation. We know that in Christ all things were created, things seen and unseen. You are before all things, and in you all things hold together. We pray about the ongoing pandemic, particularly in light of the recent spike in infections not just in our country, but in others around the world. 
Help us to stand with one another in these testing times as we ride through further uncertainty. We continue to pray also for your wisdom for those in positions of power as they seek to lead us through these uncharted waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, as we take time in our connect groups to go through the difference course, we celebrate the diversity we have among our community. Open our eyes to the ways that we can further welcome and embrace others, seeking to be a church that is united in our differences rather than seeking sameness. Teach us to bear one another's burdens as we collectively seek to become more Christ-like. As society can feel more and more divided around us, teach us, Lord, how to disagree well, to consider others with different points of view to us, and to seek to understand even when we cannot agree. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the fellowship we were able to experience as church together. Thank you for our church leaders, Margaret, John and Dominic, as well as everyone who serves the life of the church in some capacity. May they find renewed strength in you and be revitalised for the work of Christ Church in Greenwich. We also give thanks for the work of USPG and then pro in their project in Tanzania, working to prevent the transmission of HIV from mother to child. We are honoured to support them by holding them in our prayers and giving financially to their work. Bless their ministry and may your love shine through to those they engage with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that you understand fear and pain because of Jesus coming to earth. We pray for all those in hospital. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. In particular, we lift up to you those in our church family including Liz, Ammonia, Mary, William, Donna, Helen, Tendai, Marnaz, Joan, Essie, David and Angela. Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you and also those in our own hearts, sure that you hear us and love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw our prayers to a close with the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have been reminded today of the call to disagree well and to become people of reconciliation in the world. In our final song, we're reminded again of the depth of God's love for each of us. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Jim and the worship band are going to lead us in singing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. I hear my mocking voice call out. 
Our final blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just a few notices. Uh, next week on Sunday, Ben Lindsay, author of We Need to Talk About Race, will be with us at Christchurch during Black History Month. Um, in the morning, we'll be exploring week four of the Difference course at our 10am online service, and Ben will be speaking on practising forgiveness as we seek to become people of reconciliation in our broken and divided world. Then Ben will also be our guest speaker live in real life at Sunday at 7, next Sunday 18th of October on the topic of we need to talk about race. Ben um, has written a book, We Need to Talk About Race, and he's been a church pastor and now leads the charity Power the Fight. Ben will be speaking in this interactive service on Sunday evening at 7pm in, in church with a real life worship band, reflection and prayer. Um, we'd love it if you're able to come along, but we'd ask you to please book in on Eventbrite as we have limited seats in the church because of the COVID-19 restrictions. Or you can let me or Pam Zagomo know you're coming and we'll book you in. The service will also be broadcast live on Facebook and will go up on our YouTube channel the next day. Sunday Children and Young People's Work is on today. It's the second Sunday of the month and they'll be on via Zoom. Um, 11 o'clock, it's Junior Church. And then this afternoon at four o'clock, Sunday Huddle and also Sparrows. So note that change of time. Sparrows has moved from 9.15 to um, 4 p.m. Sunday at seven this evening is our monthly Teze service on the theme of unity and being one family in God during Black History Month simple worship, reflective silence and prayer. Wednesday, Holy Communion at 12.30 in the church. As usual, do come in through the glass doors and all precautions are taken to keep everyone safe. Please contact me or one of the church wardens, Michael and Susan, if you have any concerns for yourself or anyone else you know. Have a very good and blessed week. Amen.
grander earth has quaked before. Moved by the sound of his voice, and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well. Far be it from me to not believe, even when my eyes can't see. And this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are Through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it.